Number 17 goes 17 yards, and it counts as a touchdown pass for Pat Shermer's son, Kyle, even though all he did was catch the snap and hot potato it forward to the second-round pick out of Georgia. Chris, hey, look, Miko Hardman, Tyreek Hill, Sammy Watkins, Travis Kelsey, Kareem Hunt, Nick, uh, not Nick Chubb. He, they, he used to, uh, I got Kareem, I got it all screwed up now. They don't have the running backs. I'm, I'm mashing up my teams, the Browns and the I Chiefs. I was going to let you go there. Team. I was going to keep Thank you for you saving go. me. Yeah, they don't have Kareem anymore. Damian Williams when he's healthy. But uh, forget about the running backs. They got the receivers in the tight end. And off they go. And uh, Miko Hardman could be a very special player for the Chiefs, Chris. Yeah, uh, you know you know my favorite phrase, right, Mike? I mean, you talk about rockets up butts. I mean, Miko Hardman's got two of them, just like Tyree kill he might be the eventual replacement of a guy like Tyree kill uh, I mean he is that kind of speed he is a home run hitter it's amazing really that they found a guy so similar really raw not really a real wide receiver but they're going to try to he's kind of a weapon like Tyree kill and they're going to try to develop him into being a weapon for that offense in case they can't get Tyree kill straightened out off the field or, or find the right contract situation for him that's a tag and trade like yeah. they did with D Ford that it's big. that simple if, if you don't don't want to keep the guy you've got the replacement if you don't want to pay him 20 million a year then you, you keep me Cole Hardman who's going to cost you far less than that over the next four seasons all right time to play a little fill in the blanks coming out of week one of the preseason Chris Sims most impressive week one performance was well I'm going to go I'm using I'm going to use two here okay I'm going to go with the M&Ms all right the M&Ms as in Mayfield and Mahomes okay I'm going to go oh, wait with, a minute you only get one well tough you crap. only get I, one I put it into a nice uh, synonymous uh, it was, I don't know what the that's hell I'm trying crap. to say it was harmonious is what it was M&Ms it was creativity okay but yes Mahomes and Mayfield they just impressed me why I mean, hey, both of these guys, you know, going into year two as starters, all these expectations, right? They just get out there. Oh, hurry up offense for Baker Mayfield. Doom, 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 doom. Touchdown. Oh, no big deal. Just an 89-yard drive for a touchdown. No big deal. Oh, all this pressure and we're worried about our offense and we'll look good. Yeah, no problem. And then they'll throw a laser for a touchdown. And then, okay, with Patrick Mahomes, same thing. Coming off that year, 55, you know, 50 touchdowns, 5,000 yards to get one drive and just be that efficient and that impressive just like you never missed a beat just like riding a bike I I'm gonna give it to them because there is such thing as that sophomore slump everybody telling you how great you are and everything like that and they just seem unfazed by that they're very humble and they deliver right away to like basically say up oh, no sophomore slump here we're coming out the same guys we saw last year I'm gonna <laughs> stick to the actual script here and pick one and and I wish you had just gone with Mayfield then I could have taken Mahomes because uh, for me it is Mahomes and, okay. and here's here's Sorry. the thing when you watch preseason football yeah th there's there's something about it now you know going in it's not real football yeah. right yeah but but there's something about the way now, let me give you the example with the Vikings game right a new offense and and Kirk Cousins moving down the field but there was something about it that felt artificial and antiseptic right that just doesn't ooze out this that this is the authentic Vikings offense that this is really what we're going to see and and with Patrick Mahomes it feels different. Yeah. It felt different. Right. It felt like a regular season performance. It felt like this is the guy. Here he is. Ha like you said, hasn't missed a beat. This is the guy, right. and he's ready to go. And it doesn't feel like the preseason. He is ready to go. He is that. He is. You just let me go. Let me play. And and this is him. There's nothing artificial or restrained about any no. of it. And that's what was amazing to me. And it was very. We talk all the time, Chris. Yep. About quarterbacks not protecting themselves. And they can't have the presence of mind, and they don't have the presence of mind in that moment to, to set the ego aside and do the smart thing. And Mahomes was running into the end zone. Now, it's a preseason game. It doesn't mean anything. He was running into the end zone. What did he do? He knew to hit the deck. Yep. He knows how to protect himself. He wasn't going to be, you know, he gets thousands of fans there that want to have that excitement. Patrick Mahomes diving into the end zone. No. I'm going to hit the deck. He probably could have made it. It's not worth it. And, and having that instinct is the thing that means he's more likely than not to stay healthy for as long as he wants to play football because he's going to avoid those tough situations. Yeah. But that's what impressed me. Even though it was one – I wanted more. I'm with you, Mike. And it, 
it, because it felt like a regular season game watching Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, it just because of, he's just he's amazing. His skill set, of course, there's talent around him, and you know that like they don't have to like over game plan or manage a situation with a guy like him. He's just so good. He's just gonna they can call all their normal training wheels, you know, beginning a training camp type plays, and he still makes it look like what you're saying, like it was week three and they game plan to some team to find these explosive plays. No, not really. They're just that good. He's just that good, and and uh, they're off and running already, and I think we're going to see a lot of similar results to what we saw last year out of that offense. Next topic. I think Blank was the rookie QB that had the best debut. Singular. Okay, not I'll two, go singular not here. Not three. Okay, All right. I'll go singular here. All right, I've got to go with Daniel Jones here for, for a lot of reasons. I mean, hey, Kyler Murray, like – I want to say was more impressive. Okay, just stick with Daniel Jones. But I am, please. I am. I'm leave mine with alone. It. Yes, please. I'm All going right. there. I'm just trying to explain my my answer. Okay, uh, Kyler Murray. I mean, he's like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. But Daniel Jones for the situation that he's in. And how badly this could have been a nightmare if he made one bad decision and threw an interception or missed a bunch of passes, then everybody would have just piled on even more. Oh, my gosh, the Giants picked him number six. What a disaster. I think he had more pressure on him than any of the quarterbacks uh, that were drafted last year as far as a week one performance. And he answered the bell. And not only answered the bell, Mike, a lot of, a lot of what we talked about on Friday just looked the part, looked like he belonged. Ball popped out of his hands. Good pressure presence in the pocket, not phased by the big lights or anything of the situation. So uh, I, I kudos to Daniel Jones. Yeah. And, and what are the Giants looking for in a quarterback? GM Dave Gettleman said a guy who can handle the pressure and the scrutiny of the New York market. Yep. And so far, so good for Daniel Jones. Th this is a team that we think has no plan or a bad plan. I think they have a genius plan for easing Daniel Jones into the point where the fans are going to be clamoring for him and it's going to make that transition from Eli Manning to Daniel Jones much easier than anyone ever expected it would have been. I'm going with Kyler Murray, though. There is something magical about this kid, and you and I have been rooting for him and hoping that he will look the part. And the way uh, – two things. The way the ball comes out of his hand – and the way that it arrives, it just arrives. There's a suddenness yes. when it gets to the receiver that you just don't see. It's like, get your hands up or you're taking it right in the face, receiver. I mean, it, it is. And I think it's because he's so little that it looks as impressive as it does. But I think no matter how short or tall he is, that ball has some pop on it on both ends and all the way in between. This kid can throw. And we haven't seen him run yet. That still is being kept in the garage. But. A great thrower of the football, as you would say, Chris. Yes. And I can't wait to see him on Thursday night against the Raiders. Me, me neither. Uh, and, and, you know, just to, to pile on to what you're saying, yeah, there's, the ball flies out of his hands. And then just how quickly he can do it, but yet it looks so smooth and cool, even though he's doing it quickly. I mean, it's just, uh, I'm with you. I mean, this is as far as pure physical, like, ooh, this was amazing, make your jaw drop type stuff. I mean, Kyler Murray had me salivating for more, where I think you and I both wanted to see one more series, but uh, it is what it is, and we'll see enough of him this week, but I'm certainly excited to watch him play this year. All right, two more if we can jam him yeah, in here. Blank was in. the most surprising thing I saw over the weekend. Well, hey, this this is a tough one here. I, I guess I guess I'm gonna go because I'm gonna go with Ryan Tannehill and his performance. Not that I'm like like oh my gosh, I can't believe he did that. But there's I don't know. There's not a lot that just jumping out to me as far as this category is concerned. But I think it's just it's 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 surprising to because I'm I'm intrigued to see where this quarterback battle goes in Tennessee. Okay, I know there's no battle with Marcus Mariota. But I watched Ryan Tannehill and watched back that game the other night on film, and I just go, wow. I mean, he's every bit as good as Marcus Mariota. I mean, his skill set is very similar, and I'm not so sure he's not a better passer and a better thrower than Marcus Mariota, a little more natural of a quarterback. And he made a variety of different throws in the game when I went back and watched it yesterday to where, you know, it was surprising that they – just unleashed him, I guess is what I wanted to say, and let him put up two touchdowns and some gaudy numbers because I think it's only going to increase the chatter of, ooh, is he breathing down Mariota's neck after Mariota, you know, wasn't bad, but certainly didn't do anything special uh, with his four for eight performance, I think, or somewhere along those lines. But uh, I just find that one to be a surprising, intriguing situation overall, Mike.
My, mine is uh, very situational, very specific. At yeah. the end of the Buccaneers-Steelers game on Friday night, with about 10 seconds left, the Buccaneers scored a touchdown while down eight points. And Bruce Arians, veteran coach of the Bucs, he sent his team out to go for two. And it would have forced overtime. Yeah. You don't want overtime in a no. preseason game. Nobody wants overtime in a preseason game. And and the one guy Good that one. I would assume would just send out the, the extra point unit and just make it a one-point loss and go home would be Bruce Arians. Why would he care about whether you win or lose a preseason game? It was really stupid stunning to me and and the mistake came they were down 16 uh or they were down they they went for two earlier it was down 14 they went for two i think that's what it was and uh and then put it back at that eight point gap right uh they, they it just uh, that really shocked me because there's no need for overtime in the preseason they should get rid of it anyway yeah. but i would have thought bruce arians would have not even even taken the chance of sending that to more time and expose his players to more risk. All right, real quickly. Yeah. It's only the preseason, but Blank has me worried. The Eagles quarterback, backup uh, quarterback situation. I think that's the most worrying thing I've seen after week one. I'm not worried about a whole lot through the NFL right now, but yeah, that's a Super Bowl team. Carson Wentz has had injury issues. Nate Sudfeld, you know, breaks his wrist, not going to be back for a while. And now we're going to leave it to a rookie in Clayton Thorson and Cody Kessler, who were just, un, you know, one's an unproven young commodity. The other one's just you know, not that good for lack of a better phrase. So that scares me. That, that That's something I'd be worried about if I'm an Eagles fan right now. Yeah, and for me, it's just the Raiders. This Antonio Brown stuff, we haven't talked about it from a football perspective, but him not being there, the distraction that this creates, the issues that this that will hover over the team until this is resolved, that this this sets the entire project back and they have so many tough games this year and they have to go to Winnipeg for a preseason game London for a regular season game they have a lot of adversity this year they are already dealing with a ton of it unrelated to football yeah so uh th th this could shape up to be another rough year for the Oakland Raiders in their last season in Oakland hi I'm Mike Tirico and thanks for watching make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports